Welcome to our small family off-grid build. Today we're going to be doing our off-grid vermicomposting toilet system, which we you can see a few pictures of here, where we're basically taking an IBC tank and putting it in the ground with some worms to dispose of the waste. Uh, we've also installed a small solar array to give us power on the site since it is a truly off-grid you'll never see any big concrete trucks or cranes on our video series thanks for watching and we uh, hope you enjoy it learn something new and pass it along to others have a good day all right it's a little messy right now but we're getting things along we have the toilet fully put together we've got our water tank stand right here where that water tank will go on top we've got the uh, base leveled out and the first initial parts plumbed in where it's going to be coming down at a 45 degree off of that into the tank area another 45 degree to level it back out and then go into the center of our tank here on top of our tank we'll be dropping those uh, two pallets on top that'll uh, be able to support any weight on top of it and over here we've got the tank itself which we installed a bucket with a lid on it with sealant on both sides inside and out and we cut those holes out with the sawzall next thing that we'll be doing is installing the top center piece which is going to be another toilet flange basically and we're going to put that on top of the uh, the ibc tank and that'll be our inlet for all of the uh, waste to the verma composting uh, bin which will be down there with full of our red wiggler worms and everything else that we've got in there so just the small update video mm -hmm. and that's where the poop would go here's some holes being dug for our temporary roof structure these are the uh, logs being peeled before they go in the ground to help prevent rot obviously and again this is only going to be a temporary structure to keep it dry uh, ultimately this uh, outhouse would be styled like a log cabin on all four sides and have a metal roof and look a lot nicer than it is right now but this keeps our surface uh, dry while we're working some of the pit areas and stuff had been initially dug before uh, with some pictures coming up and we ended up digging it back out to install these shelf systems that you see on the sides to uh, help support the pallets in place. Now, don't forget to have fun and then remember why you're out there in the first place. Obviously an auger helps get the initial hole started. Enjoy the views, enjoy the nature, and enjoy each other. This is an old skitter trail we found while hiking. Oh, he's swooping fast. Where'd he go? I was hoping he'd come he's back. He's coming back, way. he's coming back. Oh, did he really just do a tiny circle? cooking our dinner over the open fire we were ready to get started on the next part of the project all right what we're gonna do now is hook up the rain barrel so I went to the uh, local big box store and got myself a shark bite connector and then a PVC connector that'll fit this so this part will be on the inside of the rain barrel this part will be on the outside now this one's nice because it has two little uh, spots on the outside it's gonna help it prevent it from turning while we put it in there Check your uh, outside diameter hole and then cut your little notches and do a fit check on the outside first. Now how we're going to get that in to the inside so this part's coming out and we're able to tie our shark bite connector in it is we're going to run a little bit of rope through this part and an object that's bigger than this, run it through the top of the uh, rain barrel 
out through this um, hole right here and then pull the rope which will pull this whole entire object all the way through and hold it onto the outside while we connect the shark bite connector. First thing you're going to do, you remember get your PVC pipe. Okay, once you get your rope through and out the uh, the bunghole of the water barrel, go ahead and run it through here and then find any kind of object as long as it's big enough to fit through the bunghole and not fit through your PVC pipe. So that's all you need. Anything like that, tie it off and we'll be back in a second to show you how we get it. Okay, next thing you're going to do is you're going to pull your connector through the bunghole with the rope. Pull it all the way through, line up the little notches. There you go, there, guy, there, yep. Okay, all right, so once you get your PVC connector and your shark bite connector on there, okay, you can get your uh, all purpose uh, construction adhesive and get it ready. Line up your little uh, connector points there so that it doesn't twist on anything, and then make sure you get a good coating of this sealant it's gonna be holding all this stuff together for you year after year so we'll be chinzy but you're getting it all the way around no gaps in it you can push it down let some of it seep in move it back and forth Make sure it's getting on the inside and outside. A nice wide surface area to mate with. As long as you don't get it on the shark bite connector part itself, you'll be able to take it off, maintenance it, do whatever you need to do with the tank or the line down the road. Keep it on the PVC part that's in the tank only. The little two pieces are going to prevent it from twisting. And then you're going to keep tension on it by having a little rope pulling on through the, kinetic, the uh, fitting and pulling up on it overnight to let it dry. Use the opportunity to show your kids the stars. Have them listen to the outside noises at night. By morning they'll be ready to explore the new day. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hit subscribe to see part two of this ongoing build.